Chapter number twenty seven of the Legends and Myths of Hawaii. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Ray Nielsen, Vancouver, BC. The Legends and Myths of Hawaii by King David Kalakua. The Tomb of Pupahi, a legend of the island of Lanai. Sailing along the lee shore or southwest coast of Lanai, a huge block of red lava, sixty feet in diameter and eighty or more feet in height, is discerned standing out in the sea, and detached from the mainland some fifty or sixty fathoms. The sides are precipitous offering no possible means of ascent and against it the waves dash in fury and in the niches of its storm-worn angles the birds of ocean build their nests observe from the overhanging bluff of the neighboring shore on the summit of the lonely column is seen a small enclosure formed by a low but well-defined stone wall this is known as the tomb of Puhupi, the last resting place of one of the most beautiful of the daughters of Maui, whose body was buried there by her distracted husband and lover, Makakihau, a warrior of Lanai. How the summit was reached by the lover with his precious burden is a mystery, but the wall is still there to show that the ascent was made in some manner, and tradition assumes that it was through the agency of supernatural forces. Puhapi was the daughter of Uaua, a petty chief of Maui, and Makakahu won her, it is related without detail, as the joint prize of love and war. How this could have occurred it is difficult to imagine, since Lanai was always a dependency of Maui in the past, and no direct wars between the two islands are mentioned by tradition. It may therefore be inferred that she was the spoil of some private predatory expedition, and that the efforts of the young warrior to jealously seclude her from the gaze of men were prompted not more by the infatuations of her beauty than the fear that she might be recaptured however this may have been they are described in the kanakau or or lamentation of pupahi as mutually captive to each other in the bonds of love the maiden was a sweet flower of hawaiian beauty her glossy brown and spotless body shone like the clear sun rising out of Haleakala. Her flowing hair, bound by wreaths of pikai blossoms, streamed forth as she ran like the surf crest scudding before the wind, and the starry eyes of the daughter of Uaua so dazzled the youthful brave that she was called Makakihu or misty eyes fearing that the radiant beauty of the captive might cause her to be coveted by some of the chiefs of the land he said to her we love each other well let us go to the clear waters of kalkulu there we will fish together for the kala and bonita and there will i spear the turtle i will hide you o light of my heart in the cave of maluia or we will dwell together in the great ravine of palawai where we will eat the young of the uwayu and bake them in the tea leaf with the sweet pala root the ohelo berries of kulakiwa will refresh us and we will drink of the cool waters of manale i will thatch a hut in the thicket of kuakai and we will love on till the stars die. The Meles tell of their loves in the Pulu ravine, where they caught the bright iwi birds and scarlet apapani. 
how sweet were their joys in the maya groves of waikanakua where the lovers caught not so beautiful as themselves but the misty eyes were soon to be made dimmer by weeping and dimmer till the drowning brine should shut out their light for ever makakeheu left his love one day in the cave of malaua while he went to the mountain to fill the huawai with sweet water this cavern yawns at the base of the cliff overlooking the rock of puapei the sea surges far within but there is an inner space or chamber which the expert swimmer can reach and where puapei had often found seclusion and baked the hono or sea turtle for her absent lover this was the season for the kona the terrific storm that comes up from the equator and hurls the billows of ocean with increased violence against the southern shores of the hawaiian islands makakehu beheld from the rocky springs of polo the vanguard of the unapproaching kona scuds of rain and thick mist rushing with the howling wind across the round valley of palawai he knew the storm would fill the cave with a wild and sudden rush of waters and destroy the life of his beautiful puapei every moment was precious he flung aside his calabashes of water and at the top of his speed started down the mountain with mighty and rapid strides he crossed the great valley where he met the coming storm in its fury over the rim he dashed with an agonized heart and down the ragged slope of the kula to the shore which the waves were already lashing in a voice of thunder the sea was up indeed the yeasty foam of surging wind-rent bellows whitened the cliffs and the tempest chorused the mad anthem of the battling waves oh where should misty eyes seek for his love in the blinding storm a rushing mountain of sea fills the mouth of the cave of malua and the pent air within hurls back the invading torrent with a stubborn roar blowing outward great streams of spray it is a savage war of the elements a battle of the forces of nature well calculated to thrill with pleasure the hearts of strong men but a lover looking into the seething gulf of the whirlpool what would be to him the sublime conflict what to see amid the boiling brine the upturned face and tender body of the idol of his heart others might agonize on the brink but misty eyes sprang into the dreadful cauldron and snatched his lifeless love from the jaws of an ocean grave the next day fishermen heard the lamentation of makakihau and the woman of the valley came down and wailed over puapii they wrapped her body in bright new kappa and covered it with garlands of fragrant now they prepared it for interment and were about to place it in the burial ground of manale but but makakakihau prayed that he might be left alone one night more with his lost love and their quest was not refused when the women returned the morning following they found neither corpse nor wailing lover at length looking toward the rock of pupahi they discovered makakeo at work on the lofty apex of the low sea tower the wondering people of the island watched him with amazement from the neighboring cliffs but heedless of their observation he continued his labors some sailed round the base of the column in their canoes but could discover no means of ascent every face of the rock was either perpendicular or overhanging the conviction then became general since there seemed to be no other possible explanation that some sympathizing akua or spirit had responded to the prayer of makakehu and assisted him in reaching the summit of the tower with the body of his dead bride 
and in this form his tradition brought down the touching story makakeho finished his labors he laid his love in a grave prepared by his own hands placed the last stone upon it and then stretched out his arms and thus wailed for pupahi where are you o pupahi are you in the cave of malalea shall i bring you sweet water the water of the fountain shall i bring you the uwa the palea and oheo are you baking the honu and the red sweet hala shall i pound the kalo of maui shall we dip in the gourd together the bird and the fish are bitter and the mountain water is sour i shall drink it no more i shall drink with a pui the great shark of manelli ceasing his sad wail makakehu gazed for a moment upon the grave where buried the light and hope of his life and then leapt from the brock into the boiling surge at its base his body was crushed in the breakers the witnesses of the sacrifice secured the mangled remains of the dead lover and interred them with respect in the kupapu of manalei this is the story told by the old bards of lanai of the lonely rock of pupehi and the still inaccessible summit with the marks of a grave upon it attests with reasonable certainty that the melee has something of a foundation in fact End of chapter twenty seven recording by Lindemarie Nielsen Vancouver BC